Hello and welcome back to Bish's RV everybody for another entry in my personal picks nerd preferred top five series right here. By your popular demand today we're going to be taking a look at bunkhouse family models whose gross maximum weight ranges between 5,000 to 7,500 pounds. Some of these might be kind of mid pickup towable, some of these might really still be pushing that where you want to stay a little bit more into a half ton range, but we're going to be taking a look at that like middle sized trailer, things a little bit bigger than a single axle but a little bit smaller than a giant super slide kind of rig. We're going to go through and take a look at some really fast flash flybys. If you'd like to see more of these in more detail, there's going to be a lot of links for you in the video description. Full video tours, links for pricing and availability. And along the way, if you like what you see, hit the little like button of course on the video. Leave me a little comment that says thanks for the video because this is totally by your demand, so making this happen for you folks. Um, and if this is your first time joining us, so you kind of like little things like this, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna see some fast flyby footage. We're gonna move on to the next one. I got a couple honorable mentions off the way. Kicking us off here, my number five for today's list is one that might actually surprise you because it's not necessarily the flashiest, the fanciest. I'm very much a function over fashion person and a lot of that really kind of shapes what we're going to be looking at today as someone who's gone camping quite a bit. These are the things, like I look at certain RVs and I say that is just a smart, simple, straightforward, no nonsense, no fuss, no muss kind of camper. And that's exactly how the Tracer 200 BHS LE struck me. It's just no nonsense, it's straightforward, and it really earned my respect and really kind of surprised me. Hi hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, and I've been like a kid in a candy store lately with like all the restrictions taken off of me and suddenly being able to record pretty much anything in the industry. I've been having a lot of fun, but surprisingly, what caught my attention just now, despite all these big, flashy, fancy things, was this humble little engine that could. This little uh, Primetime Tracer LE. This is a simple, no slide bunkhouse that, for lack of a better phrase, knows how to stay in its lane, and it really kind of earned my respect very quickly. So here's what I mean. Like when I was, I've been in this industry long enough. Um, I've been in doing this longer than prime time has been around. So I was there when they were birthed, <laughs> pushed out of their forest river womb, as it were. And um, when they first came out, I sort of looked at them. I was like, well, they're okay. There wasn't anything wrong with them. There just wasn't anything that really caught my attention. But the last couple of years, prime time's really been showing me something. I feel like they finally found their stride and they. They really know who they are at this point. And I think this is a really good example. So like this is a super popular layout, really launched to uh, uh, superstardom by like the Keystone Passport. And since then, like everybody and their brother who builds lightweights definitely has something like this. But what I'm really seeing out of prime time is like they figured out who they are, who they're not, they know how to stay in their lane. This isn't trying to pretend something uh, to be something it's not. It's not trying to be or trying to pretend it is the biggest, flashiest, fanciest thing out there. It's a simple, straightforward floor plan, and I think it's really good for people like, okay, I like that layout, but I don't want to stick in tin camper, but I don't want to go broke buying one of these things. It is a more budget focused lightweight, which is a harder thing to find in today's market versus kind of how it used to be. Um, it's, it's very, disciplined and restrained it's never over the top you could say it's simple um it's it's not the most upgraded flashy thing that they have but i like that i respect that and there's definitely people for whom that works like i might actually personally be a good example of that i don't camp fancy like applebee's <laughs> i am just a simple midwestern boy i don't need flashy shiny shoes razzmatazz but something like this i still get that easy clean and fiberglass i get the lighter weight aluminum build you know, a smaller truck or bigger SUV could handle something like this. There's some good things going on here, I think. Now, number four, I really wrestled with. Um, I, I'm trying to make each of these entries kind of a unique floor plan, you know? And uh, there's a couple that really butted heads. And I, in, in a previous video, like I really am still kind of flip-flopping on this one. In a previous video, I kind of pointed out the J-Flight 264 nudged out the Transcend 247 for me, but the more I go back and the more I look at these, the more that that Transcend is just really killing it for me. And I'm gonna give it the nod today, the Transcend 247BH. Simple, no slide, nicely appointed 
simpler series bunkhouse. All right, guys, you asked for it. You said, Josh, you gotta review a 247 Transcend. It's the best starter camper ever. Well, your word's not mine. I'm just gonna do my best to fill in. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bishes RV. Appropriate, I suppose, that I'm wearing my Winnebago coat doing a Grand Design since Winnebago is the parent company for Grand Design. A lot of people actually aren't aware of that, neither here nor there. The 247 Bunkhouse uh, Transcend, like I said, in your own words as viewers, this is the best starter camper you've found. Now, apologies if the audio on this is a little bit wonky. It is an insanely windy Iowa day, which uh, seems to be pretty much the norm around here, but I'm gonna do my best to fill you in. Um, there's a bunch of things this does really well. Now, naturally a floor plan like this, carpetless, easy cleaning, but something I love about the Transcend series, even here in the Explore, the little brother, they always provide you uh, like a, a roof ladder. They've got a walkable roof where uh, they've got that true queen bed. They've got some big camper features that smaller campers in this size typically don't offer. But what really sets these apart from everything that I've seen and I've heard from my team across the nation is it's not the construction, it's not the features, although they, they do a good job of that. It's, it's the support they give to their dealers and their customers. If you've never had a camper before, you, you, uh, if you've seen stories online, you're not sure who to go with, Grand Design has just become virtually legendary for taking care of their customers. If you're you know wanting to try camping for the first time before you jump into some kind of mega full-time fifth wheel, this is a brand, this is a floor plan that I think is gonna take care of you very well. It fits well within half ton uh, towing capability, by the way, or if you got a big SUV because you gotta move all the kids around, this isn't something where you have to give up your daily driver necessarily just to go camping. Now, next up, number three on our list is, is a brand that I have long been personally very sweet on, and that's the Freedom Express 257. It's our first slide-out entry on this list today. And the, the thing that I like about this one, because it's, it's, again, it's a very traditional floor plan. It's been out there. It's been done to death for years. But Freedom Express took a boring traditional floor plan, gave it a true queen, taller ceiling, Asdell, and has just really dressed and pressed this one up to the nines. And it's a camper that is always in my personal family top three. Hey everybody, welcome to Halet RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this one right here is one of these campers that is always in my personal picks list. It's the uh, Freedom Express 257. It is just an absolutely awesome family bunk mover right here. It is made for towing and going, and you can tell from top to bottom to inside out. This is designed by somebody who goes camping, and that is, I think, why it's just such a smarter trailer. The things that really stick out to me about this, like it has some awesome qualities, like uh, for the 22 series, um, Freedom Express has gone to double Asdell sidewalls, which I think is very cool. You've got uh, a ton of aluminum structure going on to keep the weight in check. It's only 5,650 pounds as we see it here today. I think very nicely within the realm of half ton towability, especially when you factor in, uh, it's, it's 28 feet and change, uh, tip to tail, barely over 28. And uh, with the wide stance stability axles, it isn't inclined to kind of push around a tow vehicle. It is just an easier, smoother kind of tower and goer. Factor in the fact that you can DDT the sucker with a double dinette table situation outside because the free floating table inside can come outdoors, plus it has its own picnic table. And uh, you've got a really good camp kitchen station on this one, like a real sink with a drain, you know, normal kind of faucet. It, there's no weird like blue sp coily sprayer hose or anything it's just a sink you've got the extra utensil drawer outside uh the griddle cook station a huge front pass through and then i start factoring in things like i look at where the hookups are located on this one uh they make more sense uh this has a 60 by 80 true queen so tall people like me can fit a taller ceiling so tall people like me can fit in the shower it's not just that it's it's lightweight and it's mobile. It's just so smartly done. Now, our number two today is one that, it's an RV that has entire Facebook groups basically dedicated to it. It, it is a an RV that defines packing 10 pounds of sugar into a five pound sack with a true queen bed that is or is not a Murphy, whatever you want. A slide out for rainy day space. It's slightly narrow body, but still tandem axle. Has Asdell, a little bit of solar, little camp kitchen. Again, 
just really packs full a lot of awesome features. And that's the Apex 208 BHS. It's a monster. All right, how am I getting out of this thing here now? Oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> yeah, I do my own stunts. Josh RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with what might be, I think, maybe the best of the Apex Bunkhouse models, uh, pound for pound, which I think is saying a lot. But when I say pound for pound, everything they packed into this at only 4,200 and 8,500 pounds dry weight with a slide, a true queen bed, double Asdell, solar heated belly, <laughs> and tandem axles for easy, reliable towing. This thing is a monster! It is absolutely fantastic. And it's one of the like the models that people overlook so easily, but if you talk to people who actually own these, so many people are like, man, I got a 208. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. Like I've made some of what I think are some of the best bunkhouse lists out there. And I actually got a lot of flack from people saying, why isn't there a 208 bunk, uh, Apex on there? Cause it's that good. Um, one of the interesting things on this one is it's narrow body, but it doesn't look it, it doesn't feel it. It looks and feels as big as any eight foot wide standard body camper, but it, it's smaller, it's easier towing. And again, at less than 4,300 pounds, it opens up doors uh, to, to so many lighter duty vehicles that a big traditional bunkhouse just couldn't handle. Yet it still brings a lot of big features. The slide adds the space. Again, it, it does have a true queen bed, albeit a bendy bed, which is not necessarily my favorite, but the way Apex did it, they did something almost nobody else does. When you're during the day with a windshield, most Murphy beds cover the windshield and it's stupid and you lose it. Not with an Apex, whether the bed is up or down as it were, it doesn't matter. You still get to use that front windshield or you can use the privacy shader or stuff a pillow up there, block it off. I don't know. Um, whatever works for you guys. But it is, oh man, it has fantastic travel access to little mini camp kitchen. This it's 10 pounds of camper in a five pound sack, man. But again, there's an entire world of awesome awesome RVs out there and there's no way I can I can guarantee like these are just the ones that really kind of speak to me for what it, like either I looked at them and I thought wow that's crazy cool or dude I would so use that I would camp so hard in that thing that's sort of what we're looking at today but a couple things always in fight amongst one another but they still feel like they deserve a little notice so a couple quick little honorable mentions on the scroll here as we work our way to our number one of all the different things out there what do I think, personally, based on the things that I see and know and, and etc., is the best uh, bunkhouse camper out there between 5,000 and 7,500 pounds loaded? It is so hard to beat. The 2509S Rockwood Mini Light, it's just not even funny. It has more standard features, more storage and whiz bangs and widgets and gadgets and 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 everything in an rv that is under 7500 pounds and under 26 feet tip to tail it's just about impossible to not have this one at or near the top of a list like this i think you know before we get started here i'm actually reminded uh, as i look at this rockwoods camp kitchen of a little thing that happened on one of my more recent camping trips with my family we had just finished lunch and my wife says hey we've got one hot dog left do you want me to pack that up or do you want it and I didn't need it, but I still had half a Dos Equis, and I figured, you know, the one really pairs well with the other. I'm kind of a little bit of a culinary aficionado when it comes to that sort of thing. Regardless, I said, yeah, you know what, sure, I'll take it. So I go to get it dressed up, and I'm like, hey, did you already put the buns away? She says, oh, no, we're out, but you could use bread. And I looked at her in her face, and I said, I don't want none unless you got buns, hun. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the just over 5,600 pound Rockwood 2509S. Uh, this is arguably the very best thing of its kind and I, I judge that based on the fact that this is actually uh, like the single most popular travel trailer at pretty much like all of Forest River, which says a lot because Forest River is a huge company. So, so why is that? 
Um, because Rockwood's not actually the first one to make this floor plan, but they're the first one to dominate with this floor plan. I will absolutely argue, though, Freedom Express from Coachman does a very good version of that as well. I'll leave you a link in the video description to check that out. Um, the one that we're looking at today, just a little housekeeping note, is actually a customer's uh, pre-ordered pre-purchase, I guess you could say. That's too many pre's in one sentence, but you get the idea. I was a little premature firing that out, perhaps. Um, that being said, I really like how they equipped this. They equipped it very similar to how we would build one, but they absolutely made this a little bit more boondock off-grid friendly by pairing up the solar package with the two-way gas electric fridge, which is going to be the most effective uh, most like energy efficient pairing if you want to do some off-grid camping. It could work perfectly fine in the parks, but something like this, if you want to stay off-grid a while, a 12-volt refrigerator, even with Rockwood solar package, could still muscle out, uh, you know, what the, the solar is able to bring back in. Something like this, though, uh, you could really camp off-grid quite a bit, which is a really big deal to talk about right now because campground congestion has become a very real challenge for a lot of people in a lot of regions. So having an RV that occasionally just lets you park, camp, your way. It's like Burger King. You could have it your way. Please don't sue me. Uh, <laughs> other little notes on this one, they've added some power stabilizer jacks, but on top of that, we've got, um, you know, a factory inverter. We have uh, an enclosed belly, 12-volt tank heaters, double Asdell, uh, a uh, awesome centralized ducting system for your air conditioner in a little camper like this. This is... This is pretty juiced up. It's got a couple little hiccups, like it has a short queen bed, um, and the traveling access is a little janky. But, I mean, when you get there and you open this thing up, the benefit of this camper, really, is that the Murphy bed system in this gives us the space and the feeling of a big super slide without the length, weight, and cost of a super slide. That is awesome. So if you're thinking of, nope, redo that. And so if you're seeking something in that midsize, a little bit bigger than a single axle, a little bit smaller than a monster super slide, you got a family to sleep, and you just don't necessarily have the vehicle or want something too big. Hopefully this list gave you a couple good ideas today. If you appreciate little things like taking the time to break this out for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'd love to see you around the next time when we're doing the full reviews for you or the tips and tricks and everything else that we do here for you at Bish's RV. And remember, again, these are things that the RVs that I think I would probably enjoy the most. It doesn't mean that they're the best ones or uh, the best ones for you. That can really vary. To really know which one's the best for you, we just need a little time to get to know you and to kind of figure out which features and qualities and aspects are going to be better fit for you. So I would ask you, which one of today's picks was your favorite? And if your favorite wasn't in today's list, which one is it? And I'll try to make sure I get it recorded next year if I haven't done so already. So until next time, thank you very much for taking the time with us today. Take care, stay safe. Have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.